All right, welcome back, Mathletes. Here we are for another segment of D Dijkstra videos. Today we're talking about uh, optimization steps and strategies. So here we go. So let's look at some of the strategies that we can, uh, we can review once more. Number one is whenever we approach an optimization uh, problem, we want to first start off by either drawing a picture or identifying some of the key information. So what is some of that key information? The shape. Right? What is the shape that we're looking for? Is it triangle, rectangle, square, cube, cone, something? What are we maximizing or minimizing? Does the problem tell us some of that? What is the equation of the shape? So many things you're going to have to have up here that you may not have readily accessible with you. So all these old uh, ex equations and expressions that you have stored in your head, you're going to need them. Utilize two equations to make one differentiable equation. We're going to use the substitution method uh, of one equation into the other that's being maximized or minimized. And that will be, a, now we'll have it nailed down to one variable. You're going to take the first derivative and find the critical values. And once you have that, you can also then take the second derivative test, plug that critical value in, and make sure that it's a max or a minimum. So that might, you might want to squeeze in here as like a five and a half. Let's take the second derivative and find the, the concavity of the function. Six, solve for that missing variable, and then finally answer the question that they have uh, here for us. So let's look at this uh, problem here we have. It is, square this up a little bit, raise up. All right, two vertical posts. This is a classic problem of height seven and 13 meters are secured by a rope from the top of one post then to the ground between the two posts, and then again going to the top of the other post. The distance between the two posts is 25 meters. All right. Where on the ground, and I didn't write it all in here, but where on the ground should you place the rope, so right in here, should you place that rope so that you are using the least amount of rope uh, used? All right, so again, draw a picture. Well, what is this thing telling us? Well, we have one post that's 7 meters, and we have another post that's 13 meters. And what we've got is we've got a rope that is attached to one. It goes to the, it goes to the ground at some point, and then it goes back up to the other post. Now, you could draw this in any variation of the distance here or over here and going up. What you're trying to do is you're trying to find the least amount of rope in order to uh, secure these two posts together. Uh, so in the drawing here, we know that one is seven and one is 13. And it told us that the whole distance between the two, between the two posts is 25 meters. So what I've chosen to do is I've chosen to label one X and the other one then must be 25 minus x because that's how much is left of the 25, all right? Now, I've labeled the hypotenuse of each triangle because now we make a triangle of a and b. And so through uh, Pythagorean theorem now, we can solve for a and b or solve for what they are and then we'll add those together because if we look, Again, they didn't give us any equations in here. We have to make this stuff up. So what I do know is that the length of the rope will be the addition of A and B, right? Because A distance, wherever that A is going to, and then some other B distance will be one long continuous piece of rope. So RL, the length of the rope, or rope length, is A plus B. Using Pythagorean theorem, I can solve for A. So a is equal to the square root of 7 squared plus x squared. 7 squared plus x squared, right? It's a right triangle there that we've made. And then we know that b is equal to 13 squared plus the quantity of 25 minus x squared. So simplify. This is already done for us. 49 plus x squared. And then b is square root of, or 13 squared is 169 plus, now this is a, a binomial um, square that we have to make into a trinomial. And when you do that, you'll get 625 minus 50x plus x squared. 
We can combine like terms, simplify one more time, that's 794 minus 50x plus x squared. Now if you want, what I would do is I'd pause the video at this moment, take this 25 minus x and square it and solve for it and make sure you're coming up with the same numbers I am and, and you should, but uh, it's a good exercise for you to practice. Uh, it's one of the patterns that we get used to in algebra uh, of dealing with the binomial square. All right, well, we have our rope length now. So we are on to, we found our key information. We've utilized one equation, but we kind of fit both into it there. And now we can use substitution. Well, we didn't really have to substitute too much in here, except we did need to use the 25 uh, minus x. But now we're ready to take the first derivative and find the critical values. All right, so what I like to do, since I'm dealing with square roots, is change these square roots into powers of 1 half, because this is going to involve the chain rule. So when we do that, we bring the 1 half down, and we reduce the power by 1. So that will give us 1 half here. And I've already crossed out this 2, but you'll see it. But it gives us 49 times, or plus x squared, to the negative 1 half power times the derivative of the inside. Chain rule says we've got to take the derivative of the inside. And that will be 2x. So you get 2x times 1 half. And you'll see that those 2's will cancel, leaving us just x. Same thing with the other piece. Here we have 794 minus 50x plus x squared, all to the 1 half power. Same rule. Bring the 1 half down, write the same in the middle. The inside stays the same. And then we reduce the power by 1, so we get negative 1 half. Derivative of the inside. Well, if I bring the 2 down, that's going to be 2x minus 50. Well, 2 times 2x minus 50. And what I've done is simplify my life is I've factored a 2 out. You can see x minus 25 here. And then there's a 2 on the outside. Now that 2 will reduce with that 2. So that gets rid of the 2 in the denominator. And we just are left with x minus 25 up top. OK, so what does that then look like from there? Uh, we get x, never mind that, it's a different problem, x divided by 49 plus x squared to the 1 half power, I really forgot to leave that there, okay, plus x minus 25 over 794 minus 50x plus x squared to the 1 half power. Remember, when you have any power of a negative, that takes it to the denominator level. And so I've moved this all to the denominator, this piece also all to the denominator. And that's how we arrive at this uh, option here. Again, set it equal to 0. That's what we do with our first derivative. And what I'll do is I'll move this whole piece over to the other side. So we get negative x minus 25. Everything else stays the same. Now I'll distribute this negative so we get just 25 minus x if I take this negative and distribute it here and there, I get a positive 25 minus x, which I've uh, shown you there. Now, in order to get rid of these um, square roots in the bottom, I have cross multiplied. So I get this here. So this piece goes up there. And this section goes up here. And then in the next step, I have squared both sides. All right. Now, by squaring both sides, I'm getting rid of the radicals. But don't forget that each thing outside the radical has to be squared as well. So that x has to get squared, so become x squared. This 25 minus x, it gets squared too. So here is the 25 minus x in its squared capacity. And then the 49 plus x squared is just there. Uh, itself because its square root is gone. Now, after that, a lot of algebra involved. I have to distribute this x squared through here. So we get 794x squared minus 50x cubed plus x to the fourth. After, on this side, now this is a trinomial multiplied by a binomial. So I have to distribute each piece. I've shortened the workforce here, but x to the fourth minus 50x cubed 
plus 674 x squared minus 2450 x plus 30,625. I know, it seems like it goes on forever, right? Okay, but check it out. Here's what's cool is when you're done with that, you'll notice that this x to the fourth will cancel with that x to the fourth. Uh, a negative 50x cubed will cancel with another negative 50x cubed. And really what we have here is 674 and 794. When we bring over the 794, we get, let me move this over a bit, come this way. Yep, all right, perfect. And so what we end up with is 120x squared plus 2450x minus 30,625 equals zero. Now, here's what I would do if I were you. Uh, I would get my ca graphing calculator out, put this in your graphing calculator, and look for uh, a maximum, you're going to find a maximum height um, of that. Now, you can, what I did was I factored out a five, and then I factored this thing for us because this would be a challenge to factor. We have really big numbers here. So if, it's a, if you have a calculator available and you're not taking some exam that says, don't use a calculator, um, uh, like an AP calculus exam, for example, or your IB math exam uh, that's non-calculator driven, then you're going to have to learn how to factor these large numbers on your own. Otherwise, I've done it for us. And another way you can is, again, just type it in your machine and have it graph it for you. You have to reset your, um, uh, your y-axis and your x-axis, your window settings, but that's okay. So you get one x that's 35 over 4, or you get another x that's negative 175 over 6. Well, we have to go back to the domain. The domain says that all x's have to be 25 or less, right? So we only can have 25 feet or so. We want it to be within that 25 feet. We also want a positive number. So we have an x is negative 175. Well, that one's automatically out because we don't have the right domain. Now, we have L of 0, so the length of 0, which is 7 plus 794 is 35.18 meters. The maximum could be 25, would be 674, which is square root of 674 plus 13, which is 38.96. And finally, the length with representative uh, 35 divided by 4 is uh, 5 times the square root of 41. And where am I putting that back into? I'm putting that back into my original function in the A plus B category and you get 32.02 meters, which is what I want. And that is the least amount of rope that I can have in the, in the uh, equation. All right? Thanks again, and uh, have a great day. That has been optimiz Optimization with D. Dijkstra, your math guy. Thanks again. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Peace out, mathlings.